in general, my attachment style is anxious attachment. And this anxious attachment can show up in all of my different relationships, in family relationships, in romantic relationships, and in friendships. And lately I've been really focused on friendship. It's been something that I've spent a lot of time thinking about, focusing on, and prioritizing in my life. And so I've been observing the ways that my anxious attachment shows up in my friendships. Here's a definition of anxious attachment from the attachment project. They specifically focus on romantic relationships, but I think this can be applied to all different kinds. So it says people with the anxious attachment style often internalize what they perceive to be a lack of affection and intimacy as not being worthy of love. And they intensely fear rejection as a result. In an attempt to avoid abandonment, an anxious attacher may become clingy, hypervigilant, and jealous in a relationship. They are often overwhelmed by the fear of being alone, so they do whatever they can within their power to hold on to their relationship. Someone with an anxious attachment style sees their partner as the remedy to their strong emotional needs. Those of us with anxious attachment struggle with low self-esteem and we look outside of ourselves for validation. Am I okay? Am I a good person? That's up to you. <laughs> if you like me, then that means I'm okay. And this is mostly unconscious. It's not something that is usually at the forefront of the mind, but it is kind of the underlying question that's continually asked in relationships when you have anxious attachment. For me in friendship, I really struggle with believing that people still like me. Like I could have the best time hanging out with someone, but after the fact, when I'm sitting with myself and I'm alone, the question starts coming up over and over again. Do you still like me? How about now? Do you still like me? Okay, but what about now? And it's so easy for me to come up with these stories in my mind without even trying. The things that they do, the things they don't do, the things they say, how they act, what that all means about me. And often the conclusion that I come to is, well, that's it, they don't like me anymore. I did something wrong. I may have offended them somehow. Maybe I hurt their feelings without even realizing. Maybe I was too much. Maybe I was not enough. Maybe I was boring. Maybe they're just tolerating me, but they're trying to be nice. And so they're not being honest. Uh, maybe I should just ask them what's going on. Um, maybe I should tell them, hey, you don't have to be my friend if you don't want to. Very anxious, right? Very, very, very anxious, all of these thoughts and worries. And that's a big part of anxious attachment is the excessive worry, just worrying and obsessing over a friendship, obsessing over a person and how they feel about you. It's really easy to lose yourself because you get so focused on the other person and what you're imagining their inner world is like. And it becomes this kind of hypervigilance where you are on high alert. You're critiquing every single thing that is said or done or not said or not done. And honestly, it's an exhausting way to be. Anxiety in general is exhausting. It really makes you feel really insecure. I often feel very insecure in my relationships. With all of these attachment styles, the one that I think we would all like to be is securely attached. And I am happy to say that there are some relationships in my life that I have become 
more securely attached in. My best friend Leah, for example, I am much more secure in my friendship with her. Same thing with my sibling Annie. I have really worked on those relationships and becoming more securely attached with them. And I'm so grateful that even though overall, I definitely have an anxious attachment style, like that is what I default to, that is what I struggle with, that is where my childhood trauma comes out and manifests in relationships, relationship dynamics, I'm grateful that I have been able to become more securely attached, that I've been able to make progress in that way. And it gives me hope for the rest of my relationships, big and small. It's kind of like I've proven to myself, I can make progress, I can work on this, I can change and grow. And so it makes me wanna work on it more. I recently came across some advice for those of us who are anxiously attached from TikTok that I found extremely helpful. Utilizing this advice and practicing it has been honestly changing my life for the better. Rather than worrying about how someone feels about you, does he like me, is he into me, is he serious about me? I want you to do this instead. I want you to assume he likes you. Assume that he feels the way about you that you want him to feel. Why? Because it has been scientifically proven that people who assume other people like them are more likable. The same is true for people who assume others don't like them. If you believe you are unlikable, people will be more likely to dislike you. Now, maybe it can feel delusional to force yourself into believing that other people feel a certain way about you, but the truth is that we do this all the time anyway. The problem is we usually automatically assume the worst. We look for signs that point to the outcome that we don't want, that this person doesn't like us. We remain in this hypervigilant state. So since you have that control, why not assume that things are the way that you want them to be? When you do this, you most likely will get the outcome that you want. This is the heart of manifestation in general. So if you're gonna assume anything, assume that things are the way you want them to be. I'm telling you, if you just make this mental shift, you will see a dramatic change in your love life and just in the way that people respond to you in general. Hope this was helpful. Make sure to follow me for more. That one simple sentence, assume they like you, has made such a huge difference in the way that I navigate my anxious attachment because Many times throughout the day, I will start an anxious loop about someone and whether or not they still like me, whether or not we're still friends, we're still okay. And being able to interrupt that loop by giving myself permission to just assume that they still like me. I've been able to stop multiple obsessive anxious loops in their tracks. And you may be worried, like I was, well, okay, but if I assume they like me and they actually don't, like there's something I'm missing here, I'm not staying on top of things and, you know, making sure I understand what the current dynamics are, then I'm gonna get hurt. Like, it could catch me off guard. I don't want to be in a position where I get rejected or abandoned and I don't see it coming. I think that's a big part for me is like, I want to see it coming. Like, don't lie to me. Don't trick me. Just tell me. Like, if you don't want me here, just tell me. But I try to remind myself that even if I do get rejected, even if I do get abandoned, I'm going to be okay. And if I can build up my self-confidence and my self-worth, it's going to help if and when I do get rejected or abandoned, because that is a risk that we take when we have any relationship of any kind. That is a risk of love, of attachment, of friendship, of caring about someone and sharing your life with them. The more self-confidence and self 
self-worth and self-love I can have, the better equipped I will be to handle that situation if and when it happens. And like the TikTok said, I already assume that people don't like me. It's very easy for me to, like I said, make up a bunch of stories about why they don't like me anymore and why I have somehow messed things up. It's very easy for me to come up with all the reasons why I'm not good enough. So going in the other direction, kind of overcorrecting by assuming that they do like me, I have found to be really, really helpful for how I see myself. Because if I'm going around assuming that people don't like me, it kind of reinforces this negative view of myself to myself, even when I'm not really consciously thinking about it. It makes me feel worse about myself. And when I assume that people like me, it reminds me that I'm likable. I have a lot to offer as a friend. I'm a cool person. Why wouldn't they like me? And what that does is it takes the focus off of the other person and trying to decipher how they feel about me, what they think about me, and it puts the attention back on myself. Not in a proud way, not in an egotistical, selfish way, but in a healthy way of taking care of myself, building up my self-esteem, and working on my self-love, taking actions of love towards myself. And that enriches my life in general and my friendships specifically. Because it's easy to self-sabotage when you are super anxiously attached and really struggling with that. I'm going to end this video with a little story. So I have this new friend that I have a really, really good connection with. I met her through dance and we just clicked right away. And I'm really grateful to have met her. She went on a trip recently and she not only told me about the trip ahead of time so that I knew she would be out of town, but she also sent me some pictures from her trip. And both of those things made me feel so loved and so cared for and honestly, pretty secure in our friendship. And I really appreciated that. So when it came time for me to go on a trip last weekend, I texted her about it because I wanted to let her know that I would be out of town as well. And she didn't respond. And you know, the first few hours I thought, it's okay, probably just busy. A few more hours went on and I was like, okay. And I started to do my anxious hypervigilance. I was like, oh shit, I texted her so early in the morning. Maybe I really messed up her sleep. Maybe it shows my lack of care and my disrespect. And then I was like, well, maybe it's not that. Maybe, maybe it's something I said or did like the last time we hung out. And so then I started analyzing that a little bit. And I would try, you know, I'd try to redirect my mind to something else, but it would kind of go back, um, back on track with the anxiety. And then my mind would start going down a path of, well, this is it. Like, you know, it was nice while it lasted. Like this friendship is not gonna last. Like clearly something's wrong. Maybe, maybe it was that I came on too strong. You know, I shared too much with her or I was too excited. You know, maybe I just showed too much excitement for this friendship and she got overwhelmed and she was like, whoa, too much, back up, Ellie. You are a lot. No thanks. So a few days went by. Thankfully, I was able to cope with my anxiety without doing anything self sabotage -y. And when I saw her at dance class, you know, I gave her a hug. I was friendly as usual. And then I asked her if she wanted to go to Froyo after class. And she said yes. 
and we took my car and as we were driving there she brought up my trip and I said oh yeah my trip did you get my text and she said oh my gosh did I not respond to that and I was like oh god <laughs> and it was such a good reminder that the brain is very powerful and can come up with all kinds of stories that are not true. And my anxiety ran wild with the fact that she did not text me back. And literally, she just forgot. And she was like, oh yeah, no, I just, I remember I saw it on my phone and then I just put it down and forgot about it. I really thought I texted you back though, are you sure? And I was like, no, it, no, but I mean, I'm, I'm glad it went through and no worries. I just wanted to ask. And I was so relieved. And, you know, we had a wonderful time together, eating froyo, chatting, laughing, as we usually do. It really is a great example. People get busy. People have complex lives with so many things going on. And it doesn't always mean something when they forget to text you back. And that's just one example of many. You know, there's so many different scenarios that this can apply to. But the point is, she still liked me. And going forward in this friendship, I am going to be reminding myself of this moment. And I'm gonna use this to remind myself in other friendships too. When I assume that they like me, they probably do. And if at some point that changes, I'm gonna be okay. And in the meantime, I'm gonna work on not stressing and obsessing over whether they do or don't. Because I can't change it anyways. But what I can do is take care of myself and focus on self-love and self-care, building better self-esteem.